I've come too far. Come on, say, God is. Come on, say, God is. God is. Yeah, yeah, God is. God is God and all. And all. Cause he's everything to me. Come on, say that choir. Everything to me. Everything to me. Yeah. God is everything. Everything to me. Yes. God is everything, everything to me. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give him some praise. If you know he's doing everything. Amen. Amen. So we have a lot of excitement happening today. And, you know, we just had two souls that were baptized. And so let's give God a hand of praise. Because I know heaven is rejoicing. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are the people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter in, the ga in his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. And I'm going to say that again. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And so at this um, time, if we have any teens, ages 13 to 18, if you would join, um, your services will be held in the educational building to my right. So if there are any teens that would like to attend Teens Church, you may do so now. So with that, I'm going to ask you guys to stand for our opening hymn.
Amen. And this is the first Sunday of February where they have set aside the month of February as Black History Month. But for we as black folk, African American, whichever way you want to title yourself, it's Black History Month. I'm black History every day. Amen. So, Amen. and we have come a mighty long way. Amen. So with that, let us pray. Let the words of my mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Our Father, which art in heaven, today we come thanking you for another Lord's Day. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be kissed with your touch of love this morning, to wake us up this morning, to see a brand new day this morning. Lord, we just ask that you are in the midst as we have this service today that you have set aside. Lord, we ask that you will continue to bless St. Matthew in every auxiliary, every ministry, every board, and especially our pastor and first lady. As they study, they work, dear Lord, to bring us your word. Lord, I pray that you will just continue to be with the sick among us. Lord, there are many on our sick and shut-in list, but Lord, we know with prayer you are able to do all things. And Lord, I ask that you would just touch each and every household that's represented here today, whether you are here in person, online, and Lord, we just ask that you just continue to meet our needs because we know that you have given us everything that we could ever need. And Lord, thank you for blessing us with some of the things that we want as well. So Lord, we ask that you will move upon this service on this day and let every heart just examine ourselves, Lord, because we know that we are not worthy of your goodness and your graciousness that you have bestowed upon us. So Lord, I just ask that you would just continue to lead, guide, and direct this branch of Zion and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are soldiers of the cross. And every round goes higher and higher as we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Amen. As the worshipers are entering, uh, we're going to prepare ourselves for the church covenant. And while they are entering, if you guys will speak to your neighbor. Let's keep on greeting your neighbors. Let's greet our neighbors. Amen. So I'm going to ask you guys to please stand so we can prepare to read our church covenant in unison. All right. Ready, set, read. Heaven be glad as we believe. Yeah. 
Amen. So I'm going to make the announcement again. Anyone ages 13 through 18, you may join our teen church that's located in the building to the right. So anyone that's age 13 through 18, you, are, you may join our teen's church that's located into our educational building to my right. All right, I was trying to give the choir a chance to catch their breath. And so with that, <laughs> we are ready for our hymn of consecration. I believe in Jesus Christ, he's a giver of my life. From heaven he came down, oh what joy I found. No, you were not there, and you don't know it oh well. What the Lord has done for me, he gave me the victory. I'm a believer, I'm a believer, say yes. Yeah. If you believe, say yes. yes say yes. Yes, I'm a believer. Oh, 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 yeah. Yes, I'm a Listen, I believe in Jesus Christ. He's a giver of our life. From heaven he came down. Oh, what joy I found. No, no, you were not them, and you don't know where or where. What the Lord has done for me, He gave me the victory. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Say yes. yes I'm a oh, oh, yeah. Yes, I'm a Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? I love you, Lord. 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 Yes, I do. I really do. I love you, Lord. I, I'm not ashamed. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love, I love you. I really do. I love you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. 
love you, Lord. Yes, we love you, Lord. Amen. And at this time, we'll have a special presentation by a pastor. Good morning. Let us put our hands together and acknowledge the presence of the Lord. We want to present to you the couples, uh, well, the couples of souls who came this morning and was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we want to celebrate with them as they celebrate their entrance uh, into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to ask if you would, yeah, Deacon. Devanisha. Okay. Say it again. Devanisha. Devanisha Rogers mm -hmm. was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Devanisha, this is your baptism certific uh, certificate, and this is your ticket that I call it, but it's your holy word. May you work. Give me a hand. <laughs> <laughs> May you work while it's day, for the night will come when none shall be able to work. Give God praise. Amen. Cameron, Cameron Nickel was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit also. And Cameron, this is your certificate. And this is your ticket, the Holy Word. And this is my hand, young man. Give it up. <laughs> Which represents my heart. May you work while it's day, for the night will come when none shall be able to work. Amen. 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 Bless you, man. Bless you, sir. Amen. God bless you. Come on and give God a round of applause. Again. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. All right. For announcements. Um, the Christian Education Ministry is excited to conduct a workbook study on the book Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing the Will of God. The workbook study will be conducted over a period of six sessions starting March 2nd. The last day to register is tomorrow. February 5th, and the cost is $20 for your material, which is due at the time of registration. Should you have any questions or if you wish to register and pay your fee, please meet Cynthia Jordan at the church service in the conference room. And so you guys, last year we had the book, um, book club, and it was such a blessing. Um, we had some great discussion, and it was just awesome. So. If you haven't already signed up, please do so. And the cost is $20 for your material. Also, for those of you who've signed up for the Go Red Luncheon, this is just a reminder that the luncheon will be held this Saturday starting at 10 o'clock. If you miss signing up for this event, you can catch it next year. <laughs> so as we do every um, February, we um, share a moment in black history, which is our history here at St. Matthew Baptist Church. In February, we celebrate the most famous in our past for they are symbols of possibility in the black communities present. While celebrating them, we also choose to acknowledge those whose names are lost to us. It is their honest 
unrecognized labor and love that paved the way for the future we may yet realize. On the 50th anniversary of the establishment of Negro History Week, President Gerald Ford acknowledged the call to turn the week-long celebration into a full month. Praise God. With Ford's declaration, Black History Month was established in 1976. It is in the course of our lifetime, then, that this annual celebration of black excellence has become the norm. This year at SMBC, we would like to recognize those among us that stood out in history and became the first at an important contribution. It is also important that these individuals now border on the ambiguous in, Fe in February, for they made remarkable contributions to this country's history. So today, we salute Brenda Jordan, the first African-American female to start a Girl Scout troop in the Northeastern North Carolina area. Ms. Jordan, will you please stand so that you may be recognized. Oh, she's in the choir. Hey, Ms. Jordan. And Ms. Jordan is not a new member, but she's one of our newest members. And so we want to thank you, Ms. Jordan, for your persistence and dedication um, as you help um, our black and brown girls to build courage, confidence, and character, and may God continue to bless you as you do a good turn daily. I did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> that is their motto, um, um, as you do a good, a good turn daily. And so may God continue to bless you in everything that you do. So let's give her another round of applause. All right, at this time, I'll have um, the new um, facility committee come forth with a special presentation. Hello, St. Matthews. Happy Black History Month. And that is not my announcement. <laughs> Everybody I see should be celebrating Black History Month 24-7. Amen. Amen. And if you're as dark as I am, you should be celebrating it double. <laughs> Let's be real. Amen. To Reverend Dr. Avery, First Lady Addie Avery, and the St. Matthew family and friends, that are here and on streaming. Good morning to you. Good morning. God is good, ain't he? Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Hey, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm here this morning to tell you about, present to some, and introduce to others the Capital Campaign Fund that we talked about doing our homecoming weekend in August of 2023. You all remember that? Hey, man, well, we're going to reiterate that, and we're going to put a little bit more light on that today because we have a little bit more information to pass on to you. And, of course, my name is Deacon James Holloway, and I've been asked to uh, chair the new facility committee. We started out in January of 2023. Happy anniversary to us. Amen. Yay. Amen. And we've been working ever since. In August, we started getting a uh, estimate and a facility uh, feasibility study doing, done on all of our properties of St. Matthew across the street and up there on the side of the parking lot as you go to the back parking lot. And the facility uh, have been informed that the feasibility study uh, has indicated that the best, the best location for our Life Center is here on our campus, here at St. Matthew. So you don't have to worry about crossing the street. Hey, man, ain't God good? 
Yes, he is. God is good. And that ain't the only good news I got for you. I know I didn't talk proper, but that's not the only good news I have for you. Okay? Amen. It gives me great pleasure to share with you the vision that God has given our pastor and the leadership of SMBC. Amen. Amen. Phase one, you are sitting in it. The pastor's vision, you're sitting in it right now. The pastor had another vision, a phase two, which is our life center. And that's what we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen. How can I help? Okay, we're going to show you the video one more time. Media center, if you would help me with that. Thank you. Good morning to our St. Matthew Ice. It's a pleasure and honor to, to uh, have this opportunity, this brief moment, just to talk with you. And we are so excited about our 152nd uh, anniversary, our church anniversary. God has been blessing and keeping us. And as I was thinking, uh, we have uh, paid off our first phase of our vision in this facility in which we worship in, and God allowed us to pay off a, a few months prior to the pandemic. And that, that, that's God's grace that comes from our planning and working together. And now we are ready. We are ready, and we feel like we're able. We've got God with us, and with all of you working, to be able to make some tangible steps into going into our second phase, and that is our family resource center that we're in the planning stage now uh, across the street. Uh, those things that we hope that would be uh, uh, be a part of that uh, facility would be things that would, for our youth and for our uh, senior citizens and just for all, all ages, uh, things that, plans that we hope would be able to benefit not only our church but also our community and then too it may even reach into the global community but we need your help we need your help and we want you to be uh, willing and able particularly able uh, that you would uh, be a part of this vision and this plan we know that you can we know that you will and we're trusting God be able to uh, help us as we reach out to help our community. Hi, St. Matthew. Glad you could be here with us. We're anxious and, and very excited about our future and where we are right now. We are earmarking on creating plans for a new center. This center is going to give us the ability to service the community more, plus to be able to be a larger part of Wake Baptist Association here in, in Raleigh area. We can host more events and do things for the community. And the idea would probably be to have a uh, child care center where we can reach out to the community and support our, our membership and the community. We thank you and we actually get on board with this effort because we really want to be a blessing to God as we go forward with Christ. Thank you. This is an awesome time to be serving the Lord and here at the church. You know, we're really working our way toward phase two, uh, looking forward to the new facility, community center, and just looking forward to all of what God's going to use us and do through us through this new center. So if you would, come on and support us as we support the Lord as he moves forward and move us to higher ground.
Amen. Praise God. Yes, praise God. Thank you, Media Center. At this time, I'd like to ask the chair uh, of the deacon board and the chair of the trustee board, uh, Deacon Bryant Richardson and Chairman Trustee Christian Rivers to stand to be recognized. Amen. Amen. They are our chairs for those boards for 2024. Amen. And our previous chairs, Deacon Jeff Brown and uh, Trustee King, if you all would stand. We want to recognize you also because you all started this mission with us and you helped us get to this point. Thank you so much. And without your help, Capital Campaign would have not been birthed. And Capital Campaign, for those that don't know, helped us pay this church off in 17 years versus the 20 or 30 year ticket that we had. Amen. Praise God. Let's thank him for what he's given us already. And that wasn't just us, y'all. It was you. You're clapping for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We need your help. We need your help. And I'm going to show you and tell you why we need your help. Based on the calculations that were given to us from the contractor that we talked with, um, this building that we're talking about building, the starting point started at $10 million. Amen? I don't want anybody to say, I didn't hear you. Start at $10 million. Listen, we're not trying to pay for this building all in one day, so don't go grabbing your wallets and everything right now. But we need you to participate in the capital campaign um, fund, okay? Praise God. Y'all know your hearts. You know your purse. You know what you can do. Amen. The down payment that we are looking at would be around $3 million, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Amen. When you say amen, I hope that means I'm riding with you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. God has been good to us. Let's give him a little bit back to what he gave us because they say everything, everything belongs to God. Amen. If you think it's yours, wait a little while. He'll show you. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> At this time, we ask St. Matthew families to find it in your heart to participate in the capital campaign fund of $1,000 per family in 2024. And guess what? That's only a beginning, ladies and gentlemen. And anyway, I'm going to be truthful to you. That's only the beginning because you all know if every family in St. Matthew give $1,000 a family, that ain't $3 million. Right. I, I, listen, I was not good at math, but you all know that ain't $3 million. <laughs> okay? This is going to be a long ride for us. And how soon we're able to build that new facility, that life center, depend on us and depend on God. Right? Amen. And we say we believe in God. Amen. 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 Let's do it. Okay. And then the recommended site, I told you where the recommended site, that's 4.5 acres over there. And um, at this time, i like to ask Deacon Richardson, and trustee Christian Rivers to come forward to make a presentation in their own way. Dr. Avery, First Lady, family, good morning. morning. Deacon Holloway, you shouldn't have said in our own way. <laughs> but we will not be uh, long-winded or anything, but just want to let the church know that, uh, and I can't uh, specify and pour my heart out into what Deacon Brown and um, Trustee King did in their leadership, and we thank them for that. But back in August, uh, we had a vision to help, pastor's vision. So what the deacons, the trustees, and the new uh, facility committee, we tasked ourselves with 
contributing our $1,000 up front before we came to the congregation. So with that said, we'd like to present the check for what we came up with. And I also, I also want to not leave this out. There are certain members in this church, and you know who you are, that are like the St. Matthews kind of people that we are. They knew about the capital campaign, so they contributed to this as well. So it was the deacons, the trustees, the new facility committee, and certain members who jumped on board. And we've got $40,066.60. And seven cents to start it off. To God be the glory. I'm going to be very brief and just like to thank everyone who has helped to contribute towards this. Like my grandfather used to say in the church, as long as you got some kindling wood. So we got kindling wood so we can go start that fire right behind this sanctuary. So thank you again. Okay. I don't want to see this on Facebook. <laughs> Amen. God is good. The, the leadership of this church raised that money. We started raising that money in August. And they did it in less than five months. In August. So guess what we can do with a whole year. Amen. I'm just saying. Come on, folks. Amen. Now, last thing. I'd like to introduce the new facility committee. So if you all need to know who they are. You can jump on anybody else other than me. <laughs> Amen. Deacon Brian Richardson, Trustee Christian Rivers, Deacon, Liz, Deacon Linda Rich Jones. If you all would stand as I call your name. Brother Robert Towns, Mr. Di uh, Mrs. Diane Hurd, Miss Juanita Jones Hall, Miss Taylor Keys, Miss Charlene Perry. Mr. Martin Brown and Mr. Thurman Camel. And if I miss anybody, please charge it to my mind and not my heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for your time, your patience. <laughs> Praise God. I believe we can do it, St. Matthew. Amen. Amen. So after that, this make my job even easier to introduce our pastor. Um, he's a preacher, he's a teacher, and he's a man with a vision. And so with that, I'm not going to prolong this. After our spiritual, we will hear none other than our pastor, Reverend Dr. Ronald E. Avery.
church.
come on, you can do better than that. If he is amazing, I need about two or three witnesses to stand up and give God some praise. If he amazing, come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Put our hands together and give God praise. He is amazing. Amen. Thank you, choir, for reminding us of the amazing ability of God. His grace is amazing, and it is sufficient. Good morning to the household of faith. As I always ask, and, and I know there's a bunch of you here this way, how many blessed folks in the house? Amen. Amen. We are honored and certainly pleased to be here worshiping with you all. Amen. We give God praise, the honor, <clears throat> and the glory for all of the things and many things that he has done and still continues to do. Amen. I know you all uh, have a testimonial to what God has done and, and he is doing and he is sufficient in doing this. Amen. God bless to the choir again, to our media center, to our ushers, and uh, to our first aid, and uh, deacons, and trustees, and security, and just everybody that thought it not Robert to come out and help us uh, get our service uh, in order that we may be able to not only minister to you that are here, but to those that are online. We honor him. Amen. 
I'm going to try to get you out of here as quick as possible. I know we've had a lot to do this morning, so I will hasten to get you out. Amen. I, I will give you a quick word if you give me a quick amen. 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 I will. I will. I will. Amen. Let's look quickly at our text. You don't even have to open your Bibles. Probably all of you can preach it. I'm going to be through before you even finish standing. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Woo, thank you. Merciful Savior, we thank you for this day. And we too echo the words of David. The Lord is our shepherd. Come now, God, with thy quickening power and revive these old cold hearts of ours. Give us clarity of mind and conviction of heart. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Hide me behind the cross that they might see less of me and more of thee and then none of me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. In Jesus' name, let the redeem of the Lord say amen. amen. Put your hands together and honor God. Amen. Thank you, ushers. If you have completed your, your work, your ministry, you can... Feel free to take your seat. Let's talk about this morning, follow the leader. Follow the leader. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. David paints this gentle picture of a shepherd with his sheep to describe the relationship uh, God has with us and we have with him. You know, David was a shepherd. I know you know the story, but act like you don't know it. <laughs> David was a shepherd, and he paints this picture of, of God as a shepherd tending to his sheep. We all are sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. I shall not. I shall not want. Thank you, Deacon. God bless you. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, so in a way you bless me, Lord. Amen. I'll be satisfied. Amen. Isn't that sort of I shall not want? He, What he's being mindful of is appetite management. I shall not want. He's been reminding himself of, of appetite management. Hmm. Can I talk to you? 
Because, because we're in carnality. And that's the Bible way of saying flesh. When carnality, when flesh creates a desire for what you don't have, it simultaneously, at the same time, creates a dissatisfaction for what you do have. Uh, uh, Y'all y'all understand that? When flesh yeah. creates a desire for what you don't have, it creates a dissatisfaction for what you don't, what you do have. It's called, the Bible calls it coveting. You covet what others have. while not thanking God for what you have. Uh, I think we all have coveted. Can I get a witness? Ah, uh, yes. So David, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to hasten through this. I'm gonna, okay. So, so, so David is saying God has for him created a dissatisfaction for what I desire. Are y'all with me? Am I being clear? David said, is saying that the Lord has created a dissatisfaction for what I desire in order to create a desire for what I need. Y'all missed that. So this is why he's saying, I shall not want. Some other horror, give me the right appetite. (laughs) Did I do good right now on that? Come on, man. He is acknowledging that the Lord is his leader. So he's saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's saying, follow the leader. He is my shepherd. I know you heard it so much, you may not be excited about it. But he is my shepherd. He He is no historical presence. You know why? Because he said, he is. He is my shepherd. God got to be uh, a present God. If you got a was God, then your is enemy will always defeat you. So, He is no historical character. He's not someone that did things for other people and put it in a document called the Bible for me to read. He is. He's still active in your life. One theologian called him that, 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 that he is the eternal illness. Can I get a witness? He leads me. Where does he lead us? Can I just teach this morning? I'm, God knows I'm tired. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. You did good, class. <laughs> he leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Only God can lead you to things that you need. 
He leadeth me away from unrighteousness. Are you with me? He leadeth me away from unrighteousness. That's, that's, what, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Uh, when I read that, I thought about Paul, who was Saul. Paul, Saul. He, 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 I, I watched Paul when he first started transforming to God as a leader. He goes from observing unrighteousness where he stood and held the cloak of Stephen while they stoned Deacon Stephen. He did not participate, but he was complicit. He stood there and watched them as they did what they did. He was an observer. That's in Acts 7. But he stayed with them so long. He listened to them too long. He became a part of their, uh, 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 of their lifestyle too long. So when I look over in the ninth chapter, of the book of Acts, he was not only an observer, he became a participant. When you stay around situations, when you stay around folk that try to lead you astray, if you stay around them too long, you become just like them. When you stay around it long enough, you become it. When you hear slander long enough, you become it. Can I get a witness? Or oh, y'all ain't praying with me. And then in the ninth chapter, he participated because it said Paul went out with murderous thoughts and slander looking to kill the Christians uh, of God. He moved from observing it to participating in it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, y'all know what I'm going with. Often, often, and I'm going to sit down shortly. I'm going to give you about 10 minutes and I'm going home. Often, uh, for God to lead you, he has to interrupt your life. Did y'all hear what I said? Often for God to lead you, he has to interrupt you. The same Paul, the same Saul was on his way to Damascus. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna crank up a little more. Right. <laughs> oh boy. But while he's on his way to Damascus, mm -hmm. the Bible said he was not from his horse. Mm -hmm. By a flash of light. Yeah. God has to interrupt you. Sometimes you think you own a way that, that only that there's things that, that men that only please them. But in the end, it is destruction. So sometimes God has to stop you. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Sometimes God has to stop you in your tracks. But the thing about it was when he stopped. Paul, the light knocked Paul from his horse. I said, well, couldn't God speak to Paul 
on the horse. Somebody said, hmm. Why did he have to knock Paul from the horse? Because sometimes, sometimes, God has to knock you off your high horses. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. Sometimes we think we know too much. Nobody know it better than us. Nobody do it better than us. Nobody look better than us. God has to bring you down in order to lift you up. Can I get a witness? Won't he do it? Yeah. Not Paul from his horse. I'm closing. I'm just talking to you. Ah, uh, not Paul from his horse. By this light. What was God trying to tell Paul other than you two high hearts and high minded? You, well, and, and that's, that's my input. But what was he also saying to Paul uh, as, as a leader? Yes, Paul, I know you're going to Damascus. I want you to go to Damascus. But, somebody said, but Saul can't go. Y'all missed it, didn't you? Paul, Saul, Paul was, trans his name was changed to Saul. It was Saul when Paul was so high-minded and bit on destroying the Christians. God was saying, I want you to go to Damascus because there's a work I want you to do. But Saul can't go. You have built up Saul. You have strengthened Saul. But now I want you to shed Saul. Can I get a witness? There's something God wants us to shed. I know I ain't hollering, but I know this is a word from the Lord. Now, something God wants us to share. Can I get a witness? He can use you better if you share. Can, can I get a witness? Yeah. yeah, he can lift you a little higher if you share. Can I get a witness? 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 Oh, yeah. He's able. He's able. Yes, he will. He yes, he will. I want you to share it, soul. Can I just sit down when I tell you this? His instruction to you when we follow the Lord. Listen, listen. And I, I thought about this this morning. I just kind of through this thought in there. Can I tell you? Uh, God's leadership. And we ain't always following it. Maybe you have, but I haven't. God's leadership. Uh, the instruction he gives you isn't for your, not your rejection, but for your protection. Are you with me? Ah, uh, if you tell your child, don't break dance on the glass table.
don't tap dance on the table. And they do it and get hurt. Can I get a witness? What they've done, they have disobeyed your instruction. And they have forfeited your protection. That's what God tells us. He said, I'm not telling you this just to reject you from my presence. I'm telling you to protect you. I can't look at the witness. Because, because when, 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 when you reject the Lord's leadership, the, the inherent consequences is you forfeit his protection. Uh, David said, leadeth me in the path of righteousness. So, so obedience uh -huh, affords his protection. Can, can I get a witness? I, I, I'm just telling you what, what God has told me. He, 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 he said, if you follow the leader, right. Right. there may be stuff on the left or on the right. On the but uh, if, if you follow the leader, the leader. he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. God will cover you. I, I, I said, God will cover you. Y'all didn't hear what I said. So, somebody said, God will, God will cover you. I said again, God will, God will cover you. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? If he's done it for you, somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't mean to do all that. Where are our protections? Where are our protections? Well, God told Elijah when there was a famine, he said, go down to the brook. And I will have the ravens to feed you. 
Because, you know, God speaks ravens. I will have the ravens to, to feed you. When Elijah followed God's instructions, the ravens fed him, and he drank water from the brook. And when I read that, deacons, it came across my mind, preachers and church folk, the question said, where are my blessings? Is it when I come to church on Sunday morning? Is it when I stand and preach or when the choir takes their position and sing, where are my blessings? Where are your blessings? Where are your blessings? I wish I felt like hollering this morning, but I'm so tired. Where are my blessings? And then the Spirit spoke to me and said, your blessings, for like Elijah, where his blessings were, was on the other side of instructions. Amen. That's why I miss and we miss so many blessings. Because we refuse to go on the other side of instructions. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm through. That's about 12 minutes. I'm through. Come on and put your hands together. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone here this morning that is between churches and you're out of the ark of safety, wherever you may be, and you heard the word that said, the Lord is my shepherd. And you're looking for that blessing whosoever will let them come the door of the church is open whosoever will let them come Whosoever will, let them come. Door, the church is open. Let us all stand.
of my life. And I lift my Lord, my heavenly Father, God, it's once again, God, that we're calling on your holy and righteous name. God, we want to thank you for the mighty God that we serve, who can do all things but fail. God, we thank you this morning. We call on you, God, because there's no other greater than you, God. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, your goodness, and your kindness. God, we thank you for salvation today, God. We thank you we have a mind to call on you, God. A God that can do anything but fail, God. We thank you right now, God. God, we come as humble as we know how. Asking you, dear God, to come and have your Holy Ghost way here today, God. We ask you, God, to move in a mighty way. Touch, heal, deliver. Whatever the situations that anyone that is dealing with today, God, let them know that you are the one. The truth in the life is nothing, nothing, nothing that God cannot do. God, we thank you right now. God, we pray, God, for everyone that's here calling and praying and seeking you today, God. We ask you to have your Holy Ghost way here today, God. God, we ask you, dear God, to remember the sick and shed it all over the world. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for a mind to live and do right, God. God, that we will live holy and acceptable in your sight, God. God, we ask you to have mercy right now, God. God, I ask you to search us, cleanse us, purify us, make us who you have us to be, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask you that, God, that some come today, God, giving their lives to you, God, want to turn away from these worldly desires, God, and seek you, God. We ask you to have your way in their lives, God. And God, as we pray, we pray for the sister that came up this morning for prayer, God. We, God, she says she's going for more tests, God. And we pray for her, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will have your way, God, that all the tests that she take, God, that we, she will be delivered for whatever she's dealing with, God, in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we ask you to we pray this morning yes. for Sister Porter, God, God, who was sent to the hospital this morning. God, lay your hands on her, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for right now what you have done. All the things that you have kept us and you made a way for us, God. You opened their doors that no man can shut, God. We thank you, God, that we serve a true and a living God who can do all things. We thank you. We humble ourselves unto you, God. We seek you, God, for salvation. We seek you, God, because there's no other greater God. And we thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives and all the things you hope to do, God. Lord, we thank you, God. We love you, God. And we worship your holy name. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise is due unto you, God. We thank you, God. We lift up holy hands unto you, God. And we will praise you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless the Lord, St. Matthew. We give God honor and praise. Pastor, First Lady, we have coming to join this fellowship. Sister McCants, uh, Aletha McCants, who is coming with Christian experience. Amen. 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 We also have Sister Chanel Howe who's been coming for a while and decided to join us with this fellowship. 
She has Christian experience and she has been baptized. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend. Mm -hmm. We uh, give God praise for your decision, uh, express a desire to come and join this fellowship. Sister McCant, okay, what's your first name? Aletha McCant, and you are Shanae Howard. Amen. God bless you. And by your expressive desire to become a part of this fellowship by the authority of God and the fellowship of this church, I receive your uh, your expression to become a part here. Amen. We're going to ask you that you go through our new member orientation, which uh, these uh, uh, persons here will let you know when that will be, and then you will return here, and we will give you the official hand of fellowship. But until then, you want to join me, babe? But until then, here's my hand to welcome you. God bless you. Amen. And here's my hand to welcome you. God bless you. This is my wife. Amen. Come on and give God a praise. Amen. What do you want? Okay. You can just follow her. Amen. Amen. We're going to prepare to go right into our communion. Amen. To our communion service. Let me ask before we do, uh, has everyone received your your uh, elements, your f fruit of the vine, and your bread. If there are some that have not, raise your hand, and we will we will come to you. Yeah, here's some right in the back. The blood that Jesus shed for me, it was way back on Calvary. been waited on. Jesus met with his disciples in that upper room and shared with them what we call the Last Supper. He took bread with them 
what it represented. He said the bread represented his broken body. And as often as you eat this bread, you do so in remembrance of him. After they had eaten in like manner, he took a cup, which was filled with the fruit of the vine. And he said with them that the cup represented his spilled blood. He said, as often as you drink from this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. We cannot change this from a carnal use or flesh use, but God is able. And we're going to ask our deacon to give us prayer as before we partake of this communion. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again just thanking you for this opportunity that's been set aside to commemorate your broken body and your spilled blood. Dear Lord, I know that we are not worthy. With a shadow of a doubt, we know that we are not worthy. But, Lord, we ask that you would just touch us right now. Dear Lord, I pray that you would just continue to lead, guide, and direct our paths. And, Lord, we just thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you do, and everything that you will do. So as we partake in this communion service, dear Lord, we just ask that we will examine ourselves, dear Lord, and that you will just... Just fix whatever it is that's broken in us. And with this, I ask in your daughter and son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 After which they went out to the Mount of Olives. But we have no Mount of Olives. But we do have our homes and uh, places in which we have destined to uh, be at after church. We pray for your safety there and your safety back home. Amen. Keep the Lord with you everywhere you go. He is your shepherd. Amen. It is unto him that we give and we submit power, majesty, dominion, both now and forevermore. May we lift up his countenance unto all of us and give us peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, it's in your hand. Kendrick, take us home. Come on. The greatest of the Lord. Come on, say the power. Come on, say it one more time. The greatest of the Lord. Come on, the love that he shows. The power. Great. Come on. God is great. Uh, uh, uh. And greatly to you. Come on. God is great. And greatly to you. Oh, God is. And greatly to you. God is great. Yeah. And greatly to you. Oh, God is. Yeah, yeah. And greatly to you. God is so great. Oh, oh, and greatly to you. Oh, God is. Yeah, yeah, 
and great league to be God is so great. Oh, oh, and great league to Here we go, quiet. God is great. God is great. God is so great. And great 